Bokatov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we got some very interesting news uh, for you guys here. Uh, several of these are courtesy to Brother Kyle, a new uh, a brother that has actually been contributing somewhat to our news broadcast. Uh, very interesting, some of the articles that he has shared with us as well. Wanted to bring those to you this morning. And uh, it's early morning, I guess, for you guys in America, if you happen to be watching there, anywhere from about 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. And uh, But uh, over here, it is uh, about 10 a.m. for us here, East Europe, and, uh, and 11 a.m. in Israel. Uh, but anyway, let's get started right off the bat here uh, with the uh, first article here. The Large uh, Hydrant Collider is being fired back up. And... Uh, this comes from Mail Online's news source here. It says that they, it's back to life. The machine is restarted following two years of upgrade work, and scientists hope to see dark matter for the first time, uh, says in the article here. And uh, they state here that um, uh, the large... Uh, it's been turned off for two years during a major renovation project that, that cost over 100 million pounds. Uh, that's British money, which is a little bit more valuable than the U.S. dollar. And uh, so over a hundred million dollars, probably about a hundred and a quarter of a million dollars, just to give you a rough idea there. The world's largest atom smashing machine is most famous for providing the existence for the uh, uh, Higgs boson. But scientists hope it will now unlock even more fundamental secrets of the universe. Ph uh, physicist at CERN, the Geneva-based organiz uh, organization which runs the LHC, are aiming to see dark matter for the first time ever, uh, uh, time e ever thanks to the device's upgrades. Now, they say that according to the upgrades that they have done, it will be able to go twice as fast, by the way, twice as fast. You can catch this article in Israeli News Live on our Facebook page there where we've loaded that article as well. Another uh, rather disturbing news that I got the other day, and this was from Brother Chris, I believe it was, was uh, uh, United with Israel post an article about uh, the Iran's leader publishes a new book on, called How to Destroy Israel. Thank you, President Barack Obama and the Abramo administration, John Kerry, for your faithful efforts in making sure that they have a nuclear program because now they have their own book on how to destroy Israel. And you say it'll be safer in the Middle East. How stupid can the administration be? Uh, despite the nuclear deal signed between Iran and the P5 plus one powers, Islamic Republic uh, continues to ridicule and threaten the world, specifically Israel. The Supreme Leader has now published a detailed book on how to annihilate the Jewish state. Lovely, isn't it? Irene Supreme Leader Ayatollah al-Khomeini is again promoting Israel's destruction, this time uh, with the publication of a book called Palestine, consisting of 416 pages that describe a plan to wipe out the Jewish state. The New York uh, Post was able to obtain a copy from Iran, the only place where the book is currently available, although an Arabic translation is expected soon. Uh, Khomeini described by a blurb, about the book is the uh, flag bearer of the jihad uh, to liberate Jerusalem delivers one clear message in his work. Israel has no right to exist, and this is how it can be destroyed. Uh, Khomeini insists that his strategy for the destruction of Israel is not based on anti-Semitism, which is described as a European phenomena. His position is instead based on well-established Islamic principles. Well... I guess he's going to be uh, very, very famous in Europe as well because there's a lot of anti-Semitism in uh, Europe. Uh, we find that uh, especially in, unfortunately, even in Sweden now, uh, a lot of the Jews have barbed wire fences and everything else. You can't speak about anything practically there. France uh, also very much strong uh, support of the Muslim community, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, you can check out this article as well. Very disturbing to see that. And... Uh, but what can we say? Also, uh, Gatestone Institute, combating anti-Israel boycotts. Uh, uh, says uh, in the article here, recently anxiety sprang up in Israel over anti-Israel -boy anti boycotts. Ministers met, sessions were held at the Knesset, and commentators pontificated, yet the, uh, the BDS, Boycott Divestment Sanctions, movements against Israel is a decade old. Moreover, the excitement was provoked uh, mainly by two high-profile incidents, the FI. FA and the Orange Affairs, which were resolved in 
uh, result in Israel's favor. Nothing, in fact, has greatly changed in its overall situation as before some pretty boycotts have succeeded. Major boycotts have failed and Israel's relations with the rest of the world continue to expand for now. Now, uh, we might add, though, one of the things that we noticed when we were getting, getting our plane tickets to go back into Israel again, uh, uh, up, which is a, a branch of the El Al Airlines there, is not flying from the different parts of the country here in Europe that we would normally fly from. We do not know what happened to the economic airline. It was a, a daily flight to Israel. It was very economic. And now that has ended. Uh, out of the Czech Republic, you cannot fly to Israel except through Czech Airlines or Delta or, I, th I take that back, you can fly El Al, but it's extremely expensive to fly El Al. But up the once uh, very uh, economical way of getting to Israel from different parts of Europe has ceased to be. Uh, at least in uh, Czech, the Czech Republic, also uh, Austria and Germany, uh, we cannot find any flights whatsoever from this region. So we're wondering if, if UP has been boycotted. We're going to be going uh, to the airport to see if we can find out more information about that uh, as well. Uh, very interesting article as well here. A cardinal cleans up the Vatican Bank, not his record with pedophilia. This is an article by uh, Barbie uh, uh, Nadeau. And uh, it's a very interesting article. It says, Vatican City last year was an exceptional one for the church business and the Holy See's balance sheet is any indicator, the 2014 annual report released Monday shows the Vatican's bank officials known as the Institute for Religious Works, or IOR, turned a profit of more than $72 million, more than 20 times more than it made in 2013. And it sounds like good news, but there are several dark sides to this story. The bank has been for decades embroiled in unseemly scandals that have run the, the gamut from allegations of money laundering to uh, back channel mafia ties. The bank credits cards capabilities were briefly shut down in 2012 because of non-compliance with European Union money laundering standards, which meant that tourists had to dole out cash to visit the Vatican's museums or buy holy trinkets on the premises. Isn't that funny? The EU has to ban the use of credit cards in Vatican City because of money laundering. Oh, that is hysterical. So, Anyway, all that changed under Pope Francis, who vowed to clean up the bank's dead wood and offer great transparency in the last year alone. 4,614 accounts were closed, either because they had been dormant for years or because the account holders didn't meet the new standards set by the IOR's crack team of reformers. Another 2,000 accounts face closure this year. Um, so if you want to get you a bank at the Roman Vatican Bank there, it get you a, a good way started probably on the Mark of the Beast there. All you have to have is, you don't even need the number, all you need is a name. Uh, a lot of the profits made in 2013 went to external auditors who set temporary shop in the bank's medieval tower headquarters inside the fortified walls of the Vatican City, combed through the murky bookwork based on the 2014 final report. It was money well spent. The main focus is on the fundamentally improving of overall client service standards and further personalizing your assets. Management services, IOR Chief uh, Jean Baptiste de Francais said in a statement there. Uh, anyway, you can catch the rest of that article there as well. Another interesting article here for what it may be worth um, uh, is that NASA has been forced to address the, 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 the major uh, news that had broke through uh, uh, Lynn Liaz, and uh, Lynn had promoted this big about an asteroid going to strike the Earth. Uh, well, it stirred up enough uh, heat uh, all over the world and people and the fear that this has brought that NASA finally on Mail Online, that's Mail, M-A-I-L, like mail you would get in your mailbox, it's okay, the world won't end in September. NASA forced to address radical claims a giant asteroid will soon destroy all humanity. Um, and, and imagine if a two and a half mile wide asteroid did hit the Earth, it would definitely devastate the biggest part of humanity, which really doesn't seem to line up with the two witnesses about to arrive because the whole world hates them. So there must still be an economic upturn still yet to come uh, in order for them to hate the two witnesses because the one thing that causes problems with this is the fact that they bring on plagues on the earth which would cause a tremendous problem. It says here in the article, a massive asteroid is on a collision course with earth and it's large enough to spell the end of humanity. This is the radical claim on, of an online community of biblical theorists 
who say that life as we know it will be wiped out between, 20, tw between the 22nd and 28th of September of this year, despite their lack of credentials. The popularity of the prediction has now forced NASA to speak up, dismissing the theory as unfounded. Uh, NASA knows of no asteroid or comet currently on collision course with Earth, so the probability of a major collision is quite small, a NASA spokesperson said. In fact, as best we can tell, no large object is likely to strike the Earth by uh, any time in the next several hundred years. Uh, that is a large ob object, that is, because recently uh, Sister Lisa Haven uh, reported uh, in her, on her website as well, lisahavennews.net, that uh, meteorite hits Iran and bang, Islamists say it is a sign of their coming Messiah, the Christian Antichrist, as uh, her article title says here. Uh, something also that uh, Brother Begley had reported on says this is this is a book titled Asar al Zahur, which means the age of appearance in Arabic. It is the book that reveals a specific end time prophecy regarding the meteorite that will rise in the east before the arrival of the Muslim Mahdi. The book takes its prophecies from the Mahdi, a collection of reports that quote what the Islamic prophet Muhammad said according to this prophecy. You got to remember though now the book uh, that is written quote unquote by Muhammad, uh, but keep in mind Muhammad could not write. Uh, he married Kaji, who, which was basically the equivalent of a Catholic nun, uh, and that was something that was organized by the Catholic Church, and it was the uh, Catholic monks that wrote the Quran in order to inspire the Muslim people to ri rise up against the early Jewish Christians, which were practically, were nearly wiped off of the earth at that time. Uh, but anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. I trust this has been a blessing for you, those that are watching on live stream. I'm sorry I didn't have these up on live stream here. Uh, what I understand, we still do have a little problem on how to get you the quality where you can actually see these things better there for you guys. Uh, but you can see these on our Facebook page, Israeli News Live. Just type in your search bar, Israeli News Live. I don't think you have to be part of our, com our community to see that. You could just follow that and see that. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, God bless you, shalom, and have a wonderful day. And by the way, we'll be back later this evening, uh, which will be early afternoon, uh, U.S. time. Shalom.